Hello and welcome to our lesson on solving quadratic identities by completing the square and equating coefficients. So in this lesson I'm going to show you how to complete the square of the left hand side in each question so we get an identical expression on the right hand side. So for question A we have x squared plus 4x plus 6. Now to complete the square from this quadratic we need to begin by halving the coefficient of x, which is half of 4. And we write this in brackets. So we have x plus 2, and then we're going to square this. So now when we expand these brackets, so when we expand x plus 2, we multiply it by itself, we get the x squared term, which is what we wanted here. We get a 2x term, which we add to another 2x term. So these make a 4x and this is this one here. But then we also get a 2 times 2 which is a 4 and we want positive 6. So we're going to take away this 4 to get it back to 0. So we take away 4 here but now we need to add back the 6. So now this expression is perfectly equal or identical with this expression. And we'll just tidy this up. So we have x plus 2 all squared and negative 4 and 6 is positive 2. So going back to question A, the missing number here to make the two identical would be 2. Okay, let's move on to question B. So for question B, we have x squared plus 8x minus 5. And this is identical aside here. So we're going to work out what this number is. So again, we'll begin by completing the square. So we're going to half the coefficient of x, which is 4. So we'll have x plus 4. We'll put this into brackets and we'll square it. So now we have x plus 4 multiply it by itself you can see we get the x squared term which is this one here we get a 4x plus another 4x which is the 8x term which is good and then we get an unwanted 4 times 4 which is 16. so we need to take the 16 away so we'll take it away here and then to complete the square we'll take away this 5. So when we have an identical expression, we have x plus 4, all squared, minus 21. So this 21 goes here. So do you want to try and solve the quadratic identities in question C and D? You can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. Okay, for question C, we'll write it in brackets where we have x and then half of a negative 10, which is minus 5. We'll square this, and we'll expand these out. So x minus 5 multiplied by itself. You can see we get the x squared term, and then we get the negative 5x, and another negative 5x to make negative 10x. So we have these two terms here, but then we get an unwanted positive 25. So we're going to take away this 25. And this will now get us back to x squared minus 10x. So now we need to add for 3. So the identical relationship is x minus 5 all squared minus 22. So this is negative 5. And for question D, the question D is a bit more difficult because you can see that the coefficient of x now is 1. And when we half this 1, we get a half, which makes it a little bit more tricky when we expand the brackets out. So we have x minus a half all squared. So we'll do this over here. We get the x squared term. The negative a half x 
add another negative half x gives us the negative 1x. And then we get negative a half times negative a half, which is positive one quarter. So we need to take away this quarter and then we need to add the one back in. But the one I'm going to write as four quarters. So add four quarters. So we'll tidy this up. We have x minus a half, all squared, negative one quarter plus four quarters is plus three over four. So we get x minus a half plus three over four. Okay, and finally for question A, the expression x squared minus 4x plus 7 can be written in the form of x minus a squared plus b, where a and b are constants. Calculate the values of a and b. So all we're going to do is we're going to complete the square of this quadratic and we'll find our values of a and b. So we'll begin by having the coefficient of x, which is half of negative 4. So we have x minus 2, all squared. When we expand this out, we get a negative 2 times negative 2. So we'll take away that positive 4. And then we'll add back the 7. So now we're left with x minus 2, all squared. And negative 4 add 7 is going to be positive 3. So we can see that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. So I want to show you a way of checking this. And this involves making the right hand side look like the left hand side. And we're going to begin by expanding these brackets here. So we have x minus a squared. So we'll multiply it by itself and then we'll add b. And when we expand these brackets, we get x squared minus ax minus another ax and then plus a squared and then plus b. We can collect these two terms together. So x squared minus 2ax plus a squared plus b. And we've been told that this is identical to x squared minus 4x plus 7. So now we're going to equate the like terms. So here we've got an x term. And our x term on the right hand side is negative 2a. So we know that this negative 4 must be equal to the negative 2a. We can divide both sides by negative 2. So a will equal positive 2. So now we have a value of a. We can substitute this into our constant term here. So a squared, 2 squared, plus b will give us our constant term on the left hand side, which is 7. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus b is 7. So b must equal 3, which is exactly the same solution as we got by completing the square. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again and take care.